Hi everyone, so today we're gonna to talk about a couple of really interesting things and uh, one of them is SWFT, it's called Simon's Favorite Factoring Trick and this is in a way a way, a technique to factorize certain uh, different types. That's really cool actually, it's pretty much a formal technique and you can just employ that pretty much everywhere, right? And other than that, we're also gonna talk about a little bit of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic and of course about bijection, so a little bit of set theory involved as well. So let's just get right into it. This is the problem number seven from the Swiss Math Olympiad final round in the year 2017. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how can we factorize certain diaphantines using this trick called as SWFT, right? Simon's favorite factoring trick. Then we are obviously, like I said, going to talk about bijections and the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And then we have book sessions for National Math Olympiads. And this is the problem number seven from the Swiss Math Olympiad final round in the year 2017. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so before we jump on to this, let me just talk uh, a little bit of this SWFT, right? Simon's favorite factoring take. What, what is this? Right? So for example, if we have an equation that looks like this, for example, xy plus ax plus by is equal to c. And if I ask you that, okay, try and factorize this, right? And there actually exists a very nice factorization for this. Um, this will be actually x plus b times y plus a is equal to c plus ab. And if you just expand this out, this factorization that you just wrote, you'll see that the original thing that I wrote and this factorized form is actually equivalent. Both of them are the same. And why this is so uh, potent is because on the right hand side, you get a constant. Now just to remind you, this A, B and C are constants. They'll be given to you in the question, they are integer values. So on the right hand side, you'll get an integer. And once you have this X plus B times Y plus A form is equal to an integer, you can just make cases and find out the values of X and Y. Right, so this is a very cool way to, uh, to maybe solve certain different times. And if that's not clear, let me just give you an example. Right, let's just give you an example and this will be crystal clear, okay. So let's say we have 4 over x plus 5 over y is equal to 1. I think this is a pretty recent question from one of the Canadian contests, Galoa maybe. And uh, we need to find out the number of ordered pairs x comma y that satisfy this. Classic standard direct application of SWFT. What you do is you get rid of the fractions, right? To just maybe expand this out, you'll get 5x plus 4y is equal to xy. And I'm just getting rid of the fractions. So I can state that this is 5x minus xy plus 4y is equal to 0. I can take x common, I'll get 5 minus y plus 4y is equal to 0. So now, now, once I've reached to this point, once I've in a way formed one of the factor pairs, which is 5 minus y, I need to get the other factor pair. And the idea that we are essentially going to employ is that we need to add a constant on both sides such that we get this 5 minus y term. And let me just show you how that works. So you have this x times 5 minus y. If I, let's say, add negative 20 to both sides, right? Let's just see what happens when we do that. So when we do that and I can take, let's say, um, negative 4 common over here, right? And if I take negative 4 common, what will I get? I'll get 5 minus y. Because when you expand this, you'll get negative 20 plus 4y, 4y minus 20 is equal to negative 20. Now, you see the objective of adding this negative 20 was to form this form, right? And once you have that form, you can easily factorize this. So this becomes x minus four times five minus y is equal to negative 20, or in other words, you can just see that x minus four times y minus five is equal to 20. And once you've reached this, what's brilliant is now you can just formulate certain cases, and right? you can prime factorize this 20 and you can form certain cases and then it becomes pretty easy to solve further on. Right? So the major idea of this was to factor this out, right? And that's what we're going to employ in our original question as well. So let's just read this out. So let n be a natural number so that there are 2017 pairs. 2017 is the year of the problem as well. So that there are 2017 pairs a comma b belonging to natural number. So essentially a, b, n all are natural numbers. So we are dealing with natural numbers, which is amazing. Such that 1 by a plus 1 by b is equal to 1 by n. So They've given us that a, b, and n are natural numbers, and there's a relation between these three quantities, right? 1 by a plus 1 by b is equal to 1 by n, and there are actually 2017 solutions to this. And then we need to prove that n is a perfect square. 
So basically, they've given us 1 by a plus 1 by b is equal to 1 by n. They've told us that a, b, and this n are all natural numbers. And they've told me that if there are 20, 17 solutions to this, prove me that this is a perfect square. We need to prove that n is a perfect square. So how do we go on about this? You know, like we've seen before, we just need to, in a way, factorize this, right? S double FT. Well, let's just first get rid of the fractions like we did before. And once you do that, you'll get a plus b divided by ab is equal to 1 by n. So you'll get a n plus b n is equal to ab. Now I'll shift all of them on one side. So I'll get a b minus a n minus b n is equal to 0. I can take a common, I'll get b minus n. And using a similar idea, I can really add n square on both sides. Right, so I'll get a times b minus n. And here I'll take negative n common to get b minus n is equal to n squared. So you see the same idea to take this b minus n common. And once I do that, I'll get a minus n times b minus n is equal to n squared, which is amazing, right? You just factorize this using our s double ft, right? The same idea essentially. Now, there are a couple of interesting things to note over here. And they are that if you just notice the equation, one by a plus one by b is equal to one by n, right? If you actually notice that 1 by n will be greater than 1 by a, because effectively two positive quantities are summing up to the third quantity, right? So the third quantity, the sum will obviously be greater than the individual components. So similarly, 1 by n will also be greater than 1 by b. Now, if I just flip this, I can effectively state that n will be less than a or a will be greater than n. Or similarly over here, n will be less than b and I can also state that b will be greater than n. Right? Now, because a is greater than n, a minus n will be a positive quantity. Similarly, because b is greater than n, b minus n will also be a positive quantity. Right? So effectively, n square is equal to a minus n and b minus n such that both of these things on the right hand side are positive quantities. Therefore, you know, therefore, a minus n and b minus n are factor pairs. Right? They are factor pairs of n square. So when you multiply both of them, you get this quantity n square. For example, I can state that, let's say we have a number 32, 16 and two are one particular factor pairs of, of this quantity 32. Right? for example, 64, 64, I can write 16 times four. So 16 and four are two factor pairs of this quantity 64. So till now, what we have gained is we have said that a minus n and b minus n are factor pairs of n square. But what does that mean? What does that mean? So putting it into a little bit of perspective, if a comma b is a solution to 1 by a plus 1 by b is equal to 1 by n, then that implies that a minus n and b minus n are factor pairs of n squared. Do you actually see something? So we are essentially claiming or we are essentially stating and we did just prove this that if a comma b is a solution to this given diaphantine, then a minus n and b minus n will be factor pairs of n square. Therefore, we have a bijection, right? We have a bijection and we have a very clear bijection between two sets, right? And what are the two sets? The first set is like I said, solutions to 1 by a plus 1 by b is equal to 1 by n. And the other is obviously factor pairs of n square, like I said above, right? Factor pairs of n square. So there's a very clear bijection between these two quantities. Now, let me just simplify the set over here, right? What does this mean? So factor pairs of n squared, right? What does that mean? That essentially means two quantities, s comma t, both of them, which belong to natural numbers, such that s times t is equal to n squared. That is what factor pairs means, right? Two quantities that just, you know, when you multiply them, you get n squared, as simple as that. But if you actually notice that you can only control s, t is in a way n squared by s, right? And n is a given number. So effectively, you are only controlling this s and t in a way, the values of t are limited by the values of s. For a particular value of s, you can get a particular value of t. You know, no other ways to, uh, in a way, mold t, right? t cannot be shifted as much as we want. So t is effectively fixed depending upon the value of s. Right? So we have s comma n square by s that belongs to natural numbers and such that s divides n square because we need t to be a natural number. And if t is a natural number, that means that s will divide 
n square right but there's really a better way to write this now because we know that n is fixed i can just state that this set is equivalent to the set s such that s is a natural number and s divides n square right and what does that mean s divides n square that is the divisors of n square so all i've really done is in a way simplify the set or write equivalent forms of this set and if you notice that there is a bijection between this solutions to 1 by a plus 1 by b is equal to 1 by n and this set because this divisors of n square is equivalent to the original set that we started off with right so there's a very clear bijection between solutions to 1 by a plus 1 by b is equal to 1 by n and this divisors of n squared but in the question they've given us there are 2017 solutions to this right in the question they've said that there are 2017 solutions so this is 1 by a plus 1 by b is equal to 1 by n what does that mean that means there are 2017 divisors of n square because whenever we have two bijective sets whenever we have a very clear one-to-one -one correspondence whenever we have bijection the number of elements on both sides will be the same right so there will be 2017 divisors of n square because we have 2017 solutions to our given diaphantine now we're just going to use the fundamental theorem of arithmetic to figure out the prime factorization of this n square now let's say n is represented like this you know p1 raised to the power r1 p2 raised to the power r2 goes all the way up to pk raised to the power rk Right, this is the prime factorization of n so how will the prime factorization of n square look well just square it out right p1 raised power 2 r1 times p2 raised power 2 r2 you know this goes all the way up till pk raised power 2 rk right and they've told us that there are 2017 divisors of n square what does that mean 2 r1 plus 1 times 2 r2 plus 1 you know all the way up till 2 rk plus 1 is 2017 and if this is a little bit confusing for you let me just tell you about an interesting fact, right? For example, if we have a number n that is represented as p1 raised to the power alpha 1, p2 raised to the power alpha 2, p3 raised to the power alpha 3, all the way up to pn raised to the power alpha n, then the number of divisors of n or the number of factors of n can be represented as alpha 1 plus 1 times alpha 2 plus 2. And this goes, the product goes all the way up to alpha n plus 1. This will be the number of divisors of this quantity n. That's just an interesting result, an interesting lemma that you can just note. So over here, using the similar idea, we have 2017 divisors of n square. So 2017 will be equal to 2r1 plus 1 times 2r2 plus 2 times 2, uh, all the way up till 2rk plus 1. Right? It goes all the way, the product is all the way. But if you actually notice something, that 2017 is a prime. 2017 is a prime. So what does that mean? 2017 is a prime. That means 2017 can only be represented as 2017 times 1. So that means this quantity will be 2017 and all other things will be equal to 1. So any 2ri plus 1 will be equal to 1. That means 2ri will be equal to 0 or that means every ri will be 0 except for the first one. Right? So what does that mean? All ris, all ris are equal to 0 except for the first one. Right? So for example, 2r1 plus 1 will be equal to 2017. That essentially implies that 2R1 will be equal to 2016 and dividing by 2 on both sides, we'll get R1 is equal to 1008. So effectively, effectively, all of these are 0. R2 is 0, R3 is 0, all the little RK is 0. So this number N is really nothing but P1 raised to the power R1, right? So the number N is equal to some prime P raised to the power R1, which is 1008, which is a perfect square, right? I can write N as p square raised to the power 1008 by 2 which is 504 so therefore n is a perfect square and that is effectively what we had to prove right so it's a pretty interesting question we have seen certain other variation of this question as well in other contests like the british math olympiad but uh, this is a pretty cool question and you had to effectively use a little bit of concepts of set theory a little bit of bijections but once you really got the idea that n square will have 2017 divisors once you get that concept ready this was question was pretty easy to do from that point on so really hope you learned something from that okay so we have some book sessions the national math olympiads elementary number three by david burton promise all strategies by arthur and Chell, functional equations by venkatachala 
Problems in plane geometry by Sharigin, elementary number 3 by Siapinski, graph theory by Harari, and combinatrix by Brualdi. Okay, so we have a similar but challenging problem. And um, it says that suppose we have a polynomial f of x with integer coefficients and there exists four distinct integers a, b, c, d so that f of a is equal to f of b is equal to f of c is equal to f of d and all four are equivalently equal to 5 show that there is no integer k and there is no integer k for which f of k is equal to 8 right so maybe try this out and if you're able to do it let me okay so we have some book sessions in national math olympiads Elementary number Chinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one on one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years is because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States, and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR, and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.